Okay, today we're going to be uh, degreeing a camshaft into a high performance Kohler motor. This particular one here is a 12 horsepower uh, engine. And uh, first thing you need to do when you get a high performance cam, you need to make sure the manufacturer actually ground it correctly of what it's advertised as so you know you're getting the right camshaft to make it run right. Uh, first thing you do here, we've got the camshaft installed in the engine. I got the uh, lifter set at zero lash, so the valves are got a little tension on. Then you roll the, then we roll the camshaft over so it's on overlap. So both valves here are open about equal amount. Now, what you got to do once you got the valves on overlap like this, you know, overlap is both valves open equally amount. When you stick the crankshaft, it don't matter what engine you're doing, whether it's a single cylinder, V twin, or whatever. Uh, if you put the crankshaft in, so when the crank is at top dead center, visually, and the valves are on overlap, that would be the correct tooth to put it on, and then you, then you degree it from there. I'm going to put the, cam, the crankshaft in here now, and it's a little bit, the, the teeth are on a uh, taper, because they're a helical gear, so you got to take and lead it a little bit, so when it gets on the tooth, there, it's uh, straight up and down on top dead center, the valves are open equally. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put the closure plate on, Put the degree wheel on, and then we'll put a. We'll find, we're going to find the true top dead center of the engine. We'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Okay, now we got the crankshaft in. We got the closure plate uh, just installed temporarily. Got the degree wheel on. Don't really care about the pointer yet. We just got relatively close. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the piston into the hole, and then uh, find top dead center. So. Uh, Drop the piston in there. This piston should come flush up, which it does. And now we're going to put the degree. We're going to put the uh, dial indicator on there next, and uh, that's going to be sitting right on top of the block. I'm going to set it down there. So get a little tension on this thing here. And now we're going to find top dead center just by simply uh, turn this thing around to zero. And now we're going to go on each side of top dead center. We're going to find where top dead center is. Right there's the highest spot. And we put this over, point over on zero now. Now we're going to turn it five degrees each way. And how? And watch how many thousands it goes down. So I'm going to go five degrees, and it's turned exactly ten thousands. Let's drop ten thousand. I'm going to go the other way five degrees, and it's. Dropped only uh, three thousandths. So that means we got to back it up this way a little bit. So it turns it less. I go again. Zero. There's about six thousandths. Back here. It's about eight. We got to go back here about one thousandths. Go here again. Go back to five degrees here. Go back here. And that's perfect right there. Okay, we took the piston rod out of the engine now because we don't really need that anymore since we found the true top dead center. Now what we're going to do is go check the duration on this camshaft. I believe this is like a 282 degree camshaft. So we're going to check that right now. And what we're going to do, we're going to make sure this thing's on zero here. And we're going to rotate this around to uh, 50 thousandths opening, and we're going to check that number. Should be coming up here as the exhaust hose starts to close. We're going to check it right about there. We're at 29 degrees. And we're going to roll around to 50 thousandths closing. And we'll see where we're at there. And we're at 80, uh, that's 73, that's uh, 10, 20, wait, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 3 degrees. So what you're going to do is uh, take the calculator right over here. We're going to do some quick math here. We're going to go, it's 29 degrees before top dead center, plus 180 degrees before top dead center and bottom dead center. That's 209. Then we're going to add that 73 to that, 73 plus... 282, so the cam is ground correctly. It's supposed to be 282, and that's what it checks. Now what we're going to do now, and we're, we're going to check what the lobe center is that cam, so make sure it's supposed to be ground right. 
This can is supposed to be 111 degree lobe center. So we take that 282 duration, divide that by 2. That equals 141. And then you take and minus the, that 29 degrees before top dead center. You minus that off here, and that will give you your lobe center. So it's minus 29, minus 20, 29 equals 112. So the can's got about a degree longer than, on the lobe center it should be. Not a big deal, you know, if it's 111, 112 would be relatively close, but you kind of want it pretty close to that. Um, so that's what your lobe center is. Now, now we know that, we're going to take and do the math for when that intake valve is supposed to open before top dead center. So we take 282, divide that by 2, equals 141, and minus the lobe center, 112 equals 29. So, it, so where it should be set at 29 degrees for top dead center, and it just happens to be sitting right in the correct spot. If it's not, you just loosen the bolt from the camshaft and rotate around until that number comes in where it should be. And you always need to remember that, remember that and uh, we'll go over with on the whiteboard here in a little bit how to do that. So um, that's supposed to be at 29. Let's do that. Okay, we've just got done decreeing this camshaft in. It'd like to be at 29 degrees timing at 50 thousandths lift. Now we're going to do, uh, adjust the cam, this one particular cam based on experience seems to run better at 31 degrees instead of 29. So what we're going to do, the best way to do it is get the sink set at about 50 degrees. Take a little vice grips and stick to the stick to the hole alongside the cam and grab the cam with the vice grips so you can hold it right in the position it needs to be. And then uh, we're gonna go here, we're gonna roll this thing around the 50 thousandths lift. And then we're gonna clamp the vice grips on there. Now we're at 50 thousand. Now we're just gonna loosen the, now we're just gonna loosen the cam bolt up so we can rotate the camshaft around where it needs to be. here to about 31 degrees. Right there is 31. Right about there. Always suck this bolt back up. Supposed to be right at 31, about right about there should be 31. It's right on 31. So now the cam's in two, two degrees advance. And uh, then just go around and finish tightening the rest of the cam bolts. I just use one cam bolt to tighten up to hold it while we turn it and degree it in. Once it gets set, then we tighten the other three cam bolts and then it's ready to go. Okay, well now we're going to go around and check the exhaust, the exhaust lobe on there, make sure what that thing's checking in at. And uh, we'll see what it is. We'll kind of go through the same steps, just kind of go. Kind of quickly like because we, we just kind of done, done it before with the other one. It's the same same operation just to, you know, it's just for the other side here. So we rotate this thing around. The numbers will be backwards on the exhaust side than it will on the intake side. They'll be on the other side. So this should be like 70, you know. So you're going to count from here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's about 68 degrees right there after top dead center. And, uh, Come around here before top dead center, I mean, actually, before bottom dead center. We'll rotate this around and we'll just go back here to 50 and it's at 32. So we're going to go do the quick math. Same deal 68 plus the 180 plus 32, 280. So it's 280 degrees duration on the, on the exhaust side. 
If you were into degree your camshafts in on that on that particular deal, it works the same way, uh, except in reverse from the other side. So if you wanted to go, you got 280, 280 divided by two equals 140 minus the 112. 28 degrees would be at closing, and this was at 30. The reason why it's at 30 instead of 20 is because we advanced the camshaft on the intake side, which actually delays the opening on the exhaust side, so it kind of goes the opposite way. So every, every degree you move it makes a split by two degrees. One degree of advance makes it one, one degree of uh, exhaust, too, so every degree actually is a two degree move in the total camshaft, but just on one lobe it would be two degrees. So anyway, that's what that would be set at right now. The cam's in two degrees advance. And that's about the uh, easiest, that's about the part of uh, the green camshaft center. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward once you know how to do it. And uh, once you understand what's happening, um, it's easy to work out, out with. Put the engine back together, then you go back and set your valve lash at. You know, typically intake lash is eight to 12 thousandths. Exhaust lash, 12 to 15 thousandths. That's usually hitch in the ballpark. And once you get more attuned to uh, how to build an engine, you will you can realize that, and just by playing with your valve lash, you can kind of adjust your timing or your duration in your cam a little bit to make the engine run better or worse. Um, some camshafts you have to run like 20,000 lash in the exhaust to get your better power out of it. But without a dyno, you really can't tell that with a without a, you can't tell on a track. You almost have to have it on a dyno to see it runs like that. So good luck. It should work out real good. Have any questions? Give us a call. Okay, we're going to have a quick review of just what we went over with in the engine on the, on the whiteboard here. Harrison, my son here, is going to help you out. What we're going to do is go over the, the duration. It opened at 29 degrees before top dead center. Then we rotated the crankshaft 180 degrees to get to bottom dead center. And then we continued on past bottom dead center and had it stop at, it stopped at 73 degrees after, top dead, after bottom dead center to get the timing. You add those three numbers together, the 29, the 180, and the 73, you get 282. Now, that's, what the, that's the duration of the cam. Now what we're going to find with the lobe centers, you take that 282 degrees of duration, and you're going to divide it by 2, and that gives you a total of 141. And then you minus this 29 number you had earlier, whatever that number you read, you minus the 29 off that. 29, 141 minus 29 is 112. That is the lobe center, 100 degrees of lobe centers. That's your, that's your lobe center of your intake valve. You can go through the same steps on the exhaust valve and figure out what the lobe center of the exhaust valve are. Some cams are ground at the same lobe centers, some are split. And if it's a split lobe, lobe center, say you want to be at, you got a 10, you say you got a 110 and a 112, you know, intake's at 110 and exhaust at 112, you'd degree that in at 111 would be the straight up number. And you can figure everything else off that for your cam timing. Okay, now we're going to talk about cam timing. Cam timing, you figure that out, this works with any camshaft. You know, if you know the duration, you divide that duration number, it's 282 here, divide it by 2, you get 141. And then you take the lobe center of 112 degrees off of that, that will give you a camshaft opening on the intake valve of 29 degrees before top dead center. Now if you want to advance your camshaft, let me finish here. 29 degrees before top dead center. You want to advance by 2 degrees, you don't want that valve opening at 31 degrees for 2 degrees advance. So it'll be open at 31 degrees. If you want to retard at 2 degrees, it open at 27 degrees. Right. 2 degrees retard would be 27 degrees. And that's before top dead center. Typically with a camshaft, if you retard it by 2 degrees, or if you retard a camshaft from the top, straight up number, it gives your engine more RPM but less bottom end torque. And if you advance the camshaft, typically it gives you more torque on the bottom end but less top end horsepower. Kind of a rule of thumb, and if you're kind of what your track conditions like, you can uh, actually dial your engine in for that. Some engines even like to have it retarded a little bit to run, and some like it to advance. You know, it's just the way it's all set up. But this will work with any camshaft to figure out where your timing is. If you know what the lobe center is and the duration, you just take the lobe center. And the duration, take the duration divided by two, minus the lobe center, will give you the opening when the intake valve is supposed to be open on the straight up number. And that's always at zero lash at 50 thousandths lift.